And uh, in the course of my work, I have uh, done many programs on interfaith work and uh, with, with Oves as my partner and, of course, associated with Maulana Saab and, and, his, and, his, and his organization. But I must admit that I didn't know much about him initially. This was something which was which was not part of our daily work in, in AJC, nor uh, in, at least in my side of, uh, of AJC. Rabbi Rosen would mention it, that he had people there. And when I would speak about it to many Islamic scholars and others, they would talk about, uh, have you associated with Maulana Sahib? I said, not as yet. Whenever, I would, whenever there would be any kind of a conversation on, uh, on interfaith work, on understanding Islam, his name would always come up or talk, always. And I had the fortune of meeting uh, Maulana Sahib twice, one with uh, Rabbi Rosen and one on my own when I came to see him about a couple of years ago. And even then, although his health was not at the best of times there, even then, I still remember sitting down and every word he said had such wisdom in it, every single word, it was worth listening to what he had to say at all times. And I regret that I didn't uh, have too much time to listen to him at all times for many, many years in the past and that I didn't know about him for a, for a long time. Unfortunately, we lost him uh, just last week, just four days ago. May God bless his soul. But, uh, but I am, but, but, but I would be grateful and I'm thankful that there are people who carry out his work around the country, around the world who are familiar with his work and, and, the, and the legacy is carried out forward. And I think the, this, this event is not, a, is not our usual format of a, of a panel discussion where it's, a, where it's a question answer session kind of thing. Here we would like to celebrate his life. Here we would like to like people to whoever is hearing in and joining in to understand what the person behind the Molana, the, the greatness behind the person. He may have had that look where people, some people who are not familiar with with, with his with his life and others have got that that look which is oh he's got that austere look and oh he's uh, very serious and all that on the contrary the person had a very good sense of humor Malara sub he used to simplify things for so that others to understand and what and he never ever hesitated in giving a response the appropriate and the correct response to whatever was asked for him so this is going to be a very uh, uh, relaxed uh, one hour where we are going to discuss his life. And we will, I think, start the best way is to, is to have a short prayer in his, in his memory. And I would I'd like to invite uh, Afa Saab to, to begin his first by him and then by Rabbi Rosen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله يموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَنفُسِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الذين إذا صابتهم مصيبة 
قالوا انا لله وانا اليه راجعون اولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمه وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ I will request now Dr. Maria Khan to translate the verses in English. Jazakallah. Thank you. In the name of God, the most gracious the most merciful you who believe seek help through patience and prayer surely god is with the steadfast do not say that those who are killed in god's cause are dead they are alive but you are not aware of it we shall certainly test you with fear and hunger and loss of property lives and crops give good news to those who endure with fortitude those who save and afflicted with a calamity we belong to god and to him we shall return are the ones who will have blessings and mercy from their lord it is they who are on the right path amen shukriya mari ji shukriya asiz and may i call upon david to be rosen to The <clears throat> traditional Jewish memorial prayer is called El Malei Rahamin, which means, O oh Lord, abundant in mercy, and therefore, in essence, is similar to the reference to the creator and guide of the universe as Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. This prayer calls on God. Uh, acknowledges that the departed has been received and prays for the eternal elevation of the soul to god's closest proximity and that the bond of that memory will be bound up in the bond of the living el malei rahamin שוכן במרומים, המוצא מנוחה נכונה, תחת כנפי השכינה, במעלות קדושים וטהורים, בזוהר הרקיע מזהירים את נשמת, מעולן הווחידודים כאן, שהלך לעולמו. אנו מתפללים להזכרה בשמתו. ועל הרחמים יסתירהו בסתק נפיו לעולמים, ויצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתו, אדוני הוא נחלתו, ינוח בשלום על משכבו, ונאמר אמן. אמן. Thank you. Thank you, David. That was, that was absolutely lovely. Uh, difficult subject, but let's, let's kick it off. And let's, as, as we said, we'll talk about the, about, the, about the man behind, the family man as well, behind, uh, behind the Maulana, Maulana Saab. And uh, Maria, if I can start off with you. How, you. You've grown up with him as his granddaughter. I've seen the close interaction that, you, that you've had. How would you describe him just as a, as a, as a grandfather rather than the renowned, well-known, well-famous Maulana Saab? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arjun. Thank you, Brother Uwais. And seeing uh, Rabbi Rosen on the panel, the memory came back alive when he last uh, visited Maulana at his home in Delhi in the year 2017. And at that point, uh, Dr. Rajat and... Uh, even professor farida khanam was uh, in the room and i remember it was a very fruitful and a very peaceful meeting and exchange 
and I was just listening to a, a member of Center for Peace and Spirituality from Kolkata, Mr. Muhammad Abdullah. And he was sharing his uh, remarks on the passing of the Molana. And he said that, he very rightly said that it seems that Molana was a giant tree of learning and wisdom. And we are still sitting under the shade of this tree, which is providing us with coolness and peace. So this is, I think, exactly what I feel about the Molana. And I started seriously interacting with Molana when I was barely out of school. And the first uh, discovery that I had of Molana, or the first attribute of his which I discovered, was that he really respected every person because I was extremely junior at that time, very immature, I had no knowledge. And I used to pester him with a lot of questions and he would patiently answer all of my questions. And not only that, he would then call me back and ask me, I hope your questions have been answered and if you have any further queries in your mind. So this is the way Molana really trained us all. And in every young person, I saw that Molana saw great potential and he inspired and guided us to fully actualize our potential. And one of the things which I think everybody who came close to Molana noticed was that he was extremely open and very approachable. So he did not have the demeanor of a grand, imposing figure whom you could speak only from a distance or after taking extensive appointments. Rather, I noticed that Molana would um, generously share his wisdom with anyone who came to his home. And one of his ways, very interesting ways of involving a person in his conversation was that he would ask that person's opinion on what Molana shared with him. And if you differed with Molana or if you criticized Molana, he appreciated all the more. So this is a, a very important memory that I have of him. And also unlike most Islamic scholars, when you met Molana, he would not start a monologue. He would not start a sermon. Rather, he would ask, the, his first remark to the person he met would be, share with me your life experiences. And um, that person would share some of his life experiences with Molana. And I also remember he once said that I met, a, uh, I met the head of a gang of robbers, a decoit. And when he met that decoit, Molana sat with him comfortably and asked him also, please share with me some unique experiences which you may have had in your life. So in this way, Bolana was a learner. He was a person of absolute humility. He would not approach you with the feeling of superiority or the feeling of having or being on a very high ground. He would learn with, he learned from everybody. And interestingly for me, I learned that from these experiences that he gained from people, he would extract principles of human psychology, principles of principles that govern human life. And all his readers and listeners would immensely benefit from these real life examples that he quoted. And what was very special about Molana, especially when you interact with it, interacted with him, was that he he would instantaneously come up with some creative formulas. So once he said to me and he has said to many other people who came to him that don't uh, allow anyone to dictate to you. And he would say that if, if, you, if someone provokes you and you get angry, that means you're letting that person dictate to you because he wanted to make you angry and you got angry. So you accepted his dictation. So this is one of his favorite advices to me, don't let anyone dictate to you. So this is uh, briefly some of the thoughts that I could share. Now over to Mr. Arjun. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Maria. That was, that was really interesting. Yeah, it explains what, what comes out very clearly in what you have said and what others would say and others have I've been saying is there was nothing hidden about him. What, he, what you saw is what you get. 
this is who he was. Whether it was in terms of scholarship, whether in terms of interaction with people, he was completely open. He did not hold his his fame, his his knowledge, as something that is that is superior to others or something. And that is an example which I think everybody from all faiths should and people should should uh, should should take in in the incorporate them into their lives. Um, Farida ji. As I as I understand, he was also, and not very. And considering his uh, considering his uh, uh, from the time that he came from in the early years, from everybody in every religion, he was also a great advocate for women's rights, and which was not common anywhere in any religion for that matter, especially in those days and in, in his time. And yet he was he was at the forefront of this. And he must have faced opposition, I'm sure, for education and uh, other things. I mean, his own granddaughter is a, is a doctorate, a PhD. Ma'am, you, you yourself are a, are a professor. How 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 did he overcome these these? Uh, how did he persuade people to to allow to to persuade people to 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 allow women to come back to come into the mainframe instead of uh, and without a sense of argument about it? He did it in his own way, calmly. Thank you. I also wanted to speak on this thing because you, you know we belong to a traditional family where women were not attached great importance. They were meant to live in their home and not going uh, going out and study. So uh, and we lived in a village. So it's quite strange how, how he gave us full freedom to study, to do whatever we wanted to do, to go out, to, to even to criticize him. He, he would ask me to criticize on his writings. So he gave us full freedom, I think, because he was an embodiment of the spirit of inquiry, of the freedom of expression. So <clears throat> he was he thought that this is the only way for the for a community, for a nation to go forward, to give them full freedom of expression, religious freedom, and all kinds of freedom. He, he never told us to do not to do this thing or not to do that thing. So even even these, these days when he was quite sick, so I used to go to him. He said, he would say, don't stay here. Don't waste your time. You go and you go and study. You go and study. So I said, no, I want to stay here. So he emphasis was so much on knowledge that even till his last breath, he wanted to know more and more and more. Whenever any visitor came and he was not able to even talk, he was so weak. But he said, you have got something to tell me. You have got some, some new news, something to tell me. So just always he was just avid. He, he was thinking all the time whether he was reading or he was eating or he was doing anything, he was thinking all the time. And he wanted that those values to inculcate in everyone who came in his contact, not only his family, he never discriminated between one and the other. So he wanted these values to be inculcated in everyone. He, he is. He said that you live the life of a scholar. Don't waste a single moment. You have been given only one life on earth and you will leave the fruits of whatever you have done. And he, he emphasized on intellectual development more than anything else. And for that intellectual development, he thought that freedom of expression is 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 must. So I think that is the reason why 
uh, he gave so much importance to learning to education and and he lived in a remote village so that is quite quite un, uh, not understandable how he developed that culture in that remote village of studying all the time while he was even walking the road he was studying something some paper so some book something and his mother said that one day you will meet with them with some accident if you are doing like this but he could not live without without studies so then he also was an embodiment of peace and spirituality so that attracted us so much and he gave full uh, with full conviction he he gave arguments for peace and he had he developed his his writings were so powerful that he managed to transform people's minds and hearts and and everyone says that because we were we believed in 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 in, in traditional knowledge of religion we were observing forms of religion it is through his writings through his contact that we have discovered god through his contact we have discovered god and we we know the spirit of religion so the spirit of religion was very very different from the form that everyone was following so in in you will in 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 our organization it is women who are very very active so many women are working in different fields online programs they are giving lectures they are producing editing his writings so he wanted them he said that women are more spiritual are uh, in, in in nature so they can work much more and because they were not given opportunity so they wanted to work like dr nagma who is a cps member when she came she told me that she went she wanted to do something and whenever she went to any religious uh, religious head or religious person and she wanted to know uh, that what how she can involve herself in, in in religious work so no one in, encouraged her so when she came to molana molana said you, you she when she heard him he said these your ideas must be spread communicated to everyone so he said that you do this who who is who who is stopping you from doing this so she involved herself full time and, and he encouraged women more than anyone i have heard of in 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 not only in religious activities in educational activities in all kinds of work and very important is that he said that women are intellectual partners of men so he said that men should make them husband should make their wives intellectual partners and in this way a very very good relationship was developed between between the couple because of his emphasis on this point so i think it is his this very great contribution that he allowed women to work uh, full time in religious activities so is there any other is there any other question and thank you thank you that really that was that was really enlightening it gave a background as you said also about his life in the village i mean it is not a, it's not just a question of village it's a question of how he is how his thoughts have evolved despite the condition as i understand he studied in a initially he studied in a madrasa as i'm not mistaken and 
एंड यू नो देर इज दैट इम्प्रेशन पीपल गेट अरे वहां तो रिलीजियस स्कूल में तो किसी भी हो रिलीजियस स्कूल में यू डू नॉट लर्न बियॉन्ड योर यू नो जस्ट रिलीजन ऑब्वियसली इट इज मच मोर देन दैट एंड ही अडेप्टेड एंड ही गॉट वेज टू गेट टू गेट बियॉन्ड दैट टू to use what was given to him in that in those religious schools and to use that to increase his knowledge that is what i think the lesson which is to be also taken there and i'm also pleased to to invite uh, uh swami ji shri hari prasad also a friend of uh, known friend of uh, malana saab and he is the founder of the shri vishnu foundation and he would also like to say a few words in memory of uh, malana saab स्वामी जी नारायण नमस्ते टू एवरी वन नमस्ते ग्रेट लॉस टू ह्यूमैनिटी मौलाना साहब ट्रांजेक्शन टू द अदर वर्ल्ड बट we must also remember the great body of work which he has given us his books his talks and even at a very advanced age he was giving to- regular sermons through the net he was very open to the new technologies that have come and he would uh, give talks through youtube through various ways I when I went to see him in 2016, we are not very sure whether we would be able to meet him. And uh, Dr. Rajat was there, and he organized the meeting. And Bhavana uh, Sir was very quiet. We explained about how we have a peace conference every year. and how this peace conference is very important and that to bring people together and understanding and he listened to everything silently without i'm wondering why is he so silent when we are talking we had gone as a group of devotees from the ashram and finally he said the work you are doing is exactly the same work that is done here and i'm very happy to hear of all of it and i hope that you will continue this work i am not able to come to chennai for your meeting because uh, your peace uh, conference because i'm too old for that but from here i will send uh, my prayers and blessings so that was a very cheering thing and we met professor farida i don't know if she remembers me and uh, then we and he gave us a lot of his books which is very very interesting in that sense that we could see the detachment of his thought normally we don't see in a great scholar detachment they have some sort of link to some favorite idea but he was able to look at everything as a whole and he was able to analyze the difficulties of the muslim community like a witness the sakshi we say in vedanta he was able to look at it like a sakshi and uh, no unnecessary criticism no unnecessary defense just a clinical dissection of what the problem is there is something very rare in religious leaders to be able to look at your own community not to be defensive not to be offensive there are a lot of people who talk about their community and they are unnecessarily attack it he didn't have that he just what was the reality that satyam he held on to that satyam and that satyam will protect the cps and let it make it grow more and more and i am sure that he has gone to a very good place 
and that he will always have the blessings of God. Yeah. Thank you so much, Swamiji. That was that was very that was very kind. Thank you so much. Uh, that was really lovely words. Uh, David, if I can come to you. Uh, so your, of course, interfaith is, is of course the essence of what the Maulana Sahib did. How would you describe, would you recollect your first meeting with him and how, and especially when he wrote the, when he got the Quran translated into Hebrew and, and the book which came out, it is a fascinating uh, document. Can you give us a little reminiscence about the first meeting with him and how did it go? But first of all, let me uh, wish all our Muslim sisters and brothers a Ramadan Kareem. And my deep thanks to you, Arjun, and to Oves for this initiative and for including me in it. I'm very privileged to be part of this tribute. And um, just allow me, first of all, to resonate with some of the wonderful things that have been said by all of you. And um, our the sages of the Talmud tell us that the world is preserved, that God preserves the world thanks to the saintly ones, the people of saintly disposition who live in this world, who are not always known publicly. Uh, they observe that very often those who are more well known in the world are those who are less deserving, and often the most deserving are not well known, and but they are the ones who preserve our world. And there is no question in my mind that Maulana Wahiduddin Khan, of most blessed memory, was one of those saints, the greatest saints amongst the greatest saints of our time, by virtue of whom our world is preserved. And the fact that he is not with us physically does not in any way diminish from the sense of his spiritual presence with us, with the not only the structures that for learning that he built, his own family, which are a wonderful testament to that, but all the disciples and all those who were touched by his lives remain a wonderful testament. As has been mentioned, he was such a, an embodiment of modesty, of humility, of the greatest virtues of our religious traditions that we are called upon to embody. And for Judaism, which of course is a religion of learning and teaching, a scholar and one who embodies both not only the mind, but the heart and the spirit together with it is the most wonderful of all. I love the image that Dr. Maria used of the tree. It is interesting that the first of the book of Psalms, the first Psalm, and also in the other area of the Hebrew prophets, refer to the righteous, saintly person as a tree. And the idea of the tree is not only as the, the shade that is provided and maybe the fruit that is provided by the tree, but also the fact that a tree to be a truly flourishing tree must have very deep roots. And yet the tree that is really the greatest gift is the one with the plenteous branches. And this is a beautiful image of Maulana because he was deeply rooted within his Muslim tradition. But his branches expanded out universally to be able to embrace all traditions and all people in a true spirit of universalism. So you ask me always about our meetings. Actually, the first time I met Maulana was in the 80s, 1980s, thanks to the community of Sant'Egidio, which has gatherings that would took their inspiration from the convening by John Paul II, Pope John Paul II in 1986 in Assisi, to bring the religions together. And at that time, there were not many Muslim figures of stature who were involved in these interfaith gatherings. Nowadays, we almost take it for granted, but then in the 80s, it was pretty rare. And his true authentic universalism meant that he understood this is where he should be. And he is, his very presence was an inspiration and his words were incisive and enriching. I remember on one meeting, we were actually in Madrid in the Royal Palace where the reception took place. And in his own 
simple way. He took some food, very, very little, and he sat down on the floor to eat it. And I remember having joining him there on the floor and being able to have a conversation. And it was such a gift, a wonderful gift. As you say, I, I was able to enjoy some of the fruits of his intellectual uh, endeavor and the books that I gave him, above all, the translation of the Quran, which adorns my library behind me. In fact, if you look directly, you're looking directly at where the book is on, on my bookshelf, coincidentally, or maybe providentially. But I particularly treasure the meeting which, thanks to Sant'Egidio, took place in Jerusalem long before any peace process was really underway. This was in 1995, and we had a gathering, a Muslim Christian Jewish gathering, in other words, representing the local indigenous communities, and it was attended by great personalities. Cardinal Lettre Greif from the Vatican, one of the great cardinals of the time, also a man of big heart, and Maulana was there, and we planted together a tree actually in the garden of the Armenian Patriarchate in the old city of Jerusalem, an olive tree as a sign of peace. And then, of course, he was here in 2008 at the Paris Peace Center, where he uh, gave a very profound, impressive speech that was indeed very courageous, really far reaching in terms of a vision for peace and reconciliation. Again, a wonderful quality of the Maulana was. He didn't think he was courageous, and he certainly didn't expect to get any kind of accolades for it. For him, he was just talking what seemed to him to be right, good sense, wise, and what our religions really teach us. And he advocated for what is possible, to be pragmatic. This was another very important point. Of course, the values were fundamental. But to be able to get on your high horses and claim that you have something exclusive and that you will therefore have to essentially be in some way uh, rejecting of others, this was completely against what he understood to be the authentic spirit. He understood the authentic spirit of Islam and therefore of all true religion is to find the way forward, to find compromise, to find uh, um, uh, some form of um, opportunity, as he used it, to be able to reconcile and to promote peace. He was really one of the great peacemakers, and all our religions tell us that there is none greater than that, because our religions tell us that the name of God, of Allah, is peace, and therefore those that pursue peace are truly the godly ones on earth, who therefore sanctify God's name. And such he was, and such is my privilege to have known him, even as limited as my knowledge was, and to be able to benefit from his wisdom and inspiration, and that memory I will always take with me, then his memory will always be for a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, David. That was, that was absolutely lovely. Happy memories. That's what continues after, after the body is gone. Uh, we'll get back to you on this. Uh, Rajat, uh, we're not forgetting you. Uh, can you tell us? I just I'm going to ask you the more or less the same question, but obviously from what this, how did you get into this? What what drew you to the to the Molana, which is not a very common job to pick up in the first place? <laughs> yeah, Arjun. First of all, thank you for organizing uh, this. Uh, and uh, Namaskar, Swamiji. It's such a beautiful thing to see you here. I remember that meeting, that lovely meeting that you had with Molana Saab, and the long chat that we had. And of course, Rabbi Rosen, uh, whom I had met many times in Jerusalem, as well as in India. So it's really wonderful to uh, see uh, Rabbi Rosen. And Oveh Saab, So <clears throat> uh, it's very interesting uh, uh, question that you put that how did I meet Maulana? Because uh, to me, uh, Arjun, it's like uh, a God and blessing. Uh, to me, when I met Maulana, it was way back in 2001, about uh, 21 years ago. And uh, it was a chance meeting. Uh, there was a common per contact uh, who introduced me to Molana. And at that point of time, I was passing through, I would say, a spiritual bankruptcy phase. Uh, I was into a lot of things and uh, there were a lot of existential questions that were there in my mind. And then, uh, of, uh, you know, a common contact, Khalid Ansari, he said that there is one person, Maulana Vahiduddin Khan, uh, 
uh, who addresses modern mind why don't you go and meet him but i was extremely reluctant because you know he was a muslim and to be very honest i come from a very strong hindu background and uh, my entire life in my school college days in my mba days even when i started working uh, my first job with american express i did not make any single muslim friend so to me that came as you know something not very pleasant but then still i thought that okay uh, you know the urge to get spiritual answers was so strong let me go and try out uh, this one gentleman molana waiduddin khan and so i uh, you know went and uh, to his residence and there was farida apa and molana and uh, we began to chat and i realized that uh, you know he is like an x-ray machine arjun uh, if you sit before him he will chat with you for one minute and that chat is exactly to size you up what kind of mental level you are and the reason is then he would come down to that level to explain things so that you can understand it better that's his uh, that was his you know way so he immediately sized me up uh, he sized me up that i had great love for a creator but i am thoroughly confused and so he said that raja do you know that god has not given two hearts to a man you cannot say that you love god but you can't a uh, love his creation so he could sense that i had deep hatred and then you know sort of his uh, uh, spiritual surgical process began and uh, you know i realized that uh, if you were to ask me that how would i define molana in simple terms i would just say a well wisher for entire humanity extremely duty conscious uh, he would tell every cps member don't come to me with rights i don't understand this what are your duties so you have to if you really are truly uh, a servant of god you should not bring the word right consciousness you should be duty consciousness so extremely extremely uh, sensitive person in terms of every aspect of life uh, he would use every incident to you know convey a message and that message would always be urgent to sort of connect you with your creator uh there was one very interesting incident that happened which i would like to share we'd gone to somebody's house uh and molana of course would not hesitate uh, to uh you know hammer a person uh, as a as an elderly father or a mother uh, to straighten up so uh he had to go to a washroom uh and you know so so i accompanied him and it was lunch time that we had visited that person's house so instinctively and you know i just you know reached to the washroom and i switched on the light and molana stopped there and then at that door and he turned around and he said why did you do that so i said you have to get in so he said that don't you see there is enough light why do you want to waste the light just because you can afford electricity does not give you the right to waste god's resources whether it is food water if you don't have the capacity to produce it you have no right to waste it and i sort of got a you know a 5 minute download arjun from that day uh, about 12 13 years back even when i leave my room or i leave my office cabin uh, i switch on the light i tell my team my colleagues don't waste uh, light this is uh, you know something that has been given by god almighty you you have no right so molana was you know like simple person to the core he would always emphasize that uh, you know what will you guys do you know you are not on a simple living and high thinking plane you have a long life ahead and he would sleep on the floor uh, he would there would be no ac in his room he would say i love god's air conditioner which is that air that comes through the windows so he would not he would only way only time he would uh, switch on fan arjun when you know we would uh, maria and all of us nagma navdeep all of us we would visit his room because he knows that you know we will not be able to sit so you know that was you know that was our molana and uh, i remember you know in 2001 uh, when i met him and then cps was incepted uh, there were three people and then 10 and then 15 and he realized that youths can be addressed they are objective and they are analytical 
conditioned minds cannot be and that's why he took on this task that i will create this center for peace and spirituality a platform uh, where people from all faiths can come together dialogue learn and then go together as one family so that's the uh, that was why cps was incepted and uh, uh, you know i asked him that molana how will this happen you know uh, he said remember all great things have a modest beginning and arjun not to forget he was 75 years when he started cps international uh, and at 95 he, he died in 96 till 95 before covid began he was doing all his routine work lectures talks article writing uh, dictations regular webinars uh, he displayed and demonstrated that don't use an excuse of an old age he justified every organ that god almighty gave him his eyes ears you know his hands and he said that if i can do it at 95 years i can travel i can give talks i can work all through the day why can't you so you know he would rake up the potential he would say that every person has unlimited potential but he is unaware i would simply you know i remember arjun uh, when i met him i would put questions to him which would actually be categorized in blasphemy category if i were to put that questions to any muslim leader or a muslim person i would not be alive but like uh, what maria said a very important thing that molana believed in not getting provoked he realized that it's not my intention to say something against islam or prophet it was my unawareness and it was that unawareness that he you know always tries to target and for that he says be patient be compassionate to others so much so that you know the islam or the prophet that you know uh, you know i spoke against that i went about studying quran several times and i did my phd on uh, uh, on prophet muhammad's transformation so and i realized that he was truly a mercy to mankind muslims have to realize this that what role molana has played is the role that they need to play but for that they need to be open to dialogue they need to be open minded they need to be compassionate their the prophet as god said was sent as a mercy to mankind how can you not be a merciful to others that's prophet is a role model for us so you know these are many things you know i can go on and on it's it's 21 years of association arjun uh, and molana taught us everything uh, he even he even told us it's so uh, uh, you know strange uh, arjun uh, rabai rozan that he even told us that how we should respond to the news of his death he said that when you hear about uh, me uh, don't cry uh, be like what abu bakar was at the time of prophet's death he said that uh, god is still alive and he's never going to die so he his always his aim emphasis was marifat realization connecting every person to god almighty and that's the key to having a peaceful successful life he was always positive he was like a powerhouse you know you could just sit there and you will not get tired you can spend entire day even if he doesn't speak just a look at his face would sort of uh, you know sort of do away with your worries so uh, uh, i would just say in the end that uh, the cps vision that he had uh, is uh, now such a big reality uh, we are more organized and uh, the infrastructure is in place and in last 3 days uh, you won't believe it i have not been able to keep pace with the mails of younger people wanting to join a cps we did a meeting yesterday and it went fantastic everybody is very uh, uh, you know passionate and more enthusiastic now uh in taking molana's uh, message of peace and spirituality forward and inshallah uh, we will take it to its culmination uh, all of us are now well geared and well ready uh, for uh, gear 5 so over to you arjun thank you thank you rajat that was really really the, the reminiscences were fantastic it's and as you said i think <clears throat> as you said i think the, the his his best legacy is people like you like maria and others who are taking the the story the next generation which is taking the story forward taking the narrative forward and the more 
that his word is spread. And not just in India or the subcontinent, but around the world. The better it is, the more that's a sign of success. It is not a question of money or political power. For somebody like him, that didn't matter at all. It was how much do people learn the truth and learn to think on their own. That is more important. Not by doctrine, not by dogma, but independent thinking. Think on your own, then decide what you want to do. And that's something which he used to tell me quite often. He says, who's told you this? I said, well, I read it somewhere. He says, yeah, but you didn't know about this. I said, no. So he says, then find out yourself first. Then decide what is, whether it's true or not. So that was, and uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time also because I know preparations for iftar have to be done. So I'm not going to take up too much time. Uh, but we will start off and just end this program by just bringing in last messages that you that you feel that that best take the message of the Maulana Saab forward. And I'll start with uh, with the Maria. But the best way to honor his memory. Thank you, Arjun. This was a very enlightening session. Very nice listening to uh, Rabbi Rosen and Rajat also spoke from the heart. I really had tears in my eyes listening to Dr. Rajat. So the last memory that I think I have is that Molana says that Islam is all about being God conscious and following God's commandments. And the fact that you're following God's commandments will be decided by your relations with human beings. If you have complaints, bitterness and hatred with other human beings, that means you're not really uh, following God. You're not being mindful of God. So the test for your being God conscious is your behavior with other human beings. And that's the most powerful advice that I remember from Mulan. Thank you. Uh, professor, sir, ma'am? What is the best legacy that you think that you can take forward from, from now on to honor his life best? The best legacy that he was an embodiment of peace and spirituality. So uh, we would like to convey, communicate his message of peace and spirituality to everyone and through interfaith dialogue, through uh, he he did not he he said that debate was un-Islamic through interfaith dialogue and we have to learn from everyone from all religious communities. So for him, learning was the uh, most important. So we have whatever we have learned from him, we have to communicate it to others. This is the his last message. I, as I told you that even when he was very sick, he said, you go and study, don't waste your time. So he said that don't waste your time. You have got this life only once. So you never waste your time. And this is the message that I want to convey to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Faridaji. Uh, Swamiji? struck me very much in his books and the conversation we had and the messages also which were I'm sent. sorry, we can't hear you, Swamiji. Is your... What uh, struck me very much about the uh, in the conversation we, we had with him with the uh, uh, in his books and uh, in his uh, communications also through his representative here in Chennai, was of uh, a person without any pretenses, without any pretension, pretenses to being more than what he was. He was a teacher, he was a man of God, and he was happy being that. And he did not try to be, uh, you know, a God to anybody. And uh, he was able to see the world as it is, and be a friend of the whole world. So that is something which is very remarkable. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, his work is continuing. Thank you, Swamiji. David? Well, there are so many things we must take away from his life. And for me, not least of all, 
is the lesson to try to be more modest and more humble, which to him came naturally. Not to all of us does it come naturally. Some of us have to work a little bit harder on it. But uh, we have, you know, within the Jewish tradition, we read the cycle of the Torah, uh, the five books of Moses, in an annual cycle. And just this Shabbat, this Sabbath, we're reading the passage which tells us, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. One of our greatest rabbinic commentators says, well, how can you really love your neighbor as yourself? It's, is that really possible? And he says, you need to read it differently. The Hebrew needs to be read. You shall love your neighbor. He is as yourself. In other words, when we really understand how much we are connected with one another, how much we are part of one and the same, then we will treat each other in a different way, to be able to recognize that. And as all the speakers have said, this was personified in the life of Molan. May we always have that inspiration to follow his example. That is lovely. Thank you, David. Roger? Last words. Arjun, there is one verse that he emphasizes quite a bit to uh, all of us and wherever he went, India and outside. And it's chapter 41, verse number 34, where uh, God says that good and bad are not equal. Fell evil with what is good. And you will find that your enemy has become your dearest friend. So Mulana always said that the equation is not between enemy and friend. The equation is between a friend and a potential friend. A true tribute to Maulana Saab would be to take entire humanity as one family and not as we and they, not as Jew, Christian, Muslim, Hindu. He never did that. So uh, the only thing that is needed is to do away with hatred, negativity in one's heart. Reach out to the whole world, to every member of uh, you know the other community that's what he wanted that's what his dream was and that what that, that is what he would want us to do no hatred no negativity and treat the entire world as one family that's yeah absolutely i think i think this is a message which we hear from many religious scholars etc but the depth of what the Maulana meant and how he said it is what made the difference that he truly believed in it. No, he wasn't, it wasn't just lip service. It was something that he truly believed in. And that came through whenever there was an interaction with him. And I think this session itself is, is, a, is, a, great, uh, is a great example of how he, what, he what, what, what in a way, what kind of a legacy he has, he has brought in, where there are Hindus, Jews, Muslims who have come together to honor the man whom whom majority of people have heard about the legend, but didn't know about. So we are, you know, something that at least people could see what has he done? What is the legacy that this is a result of his legacy that he's brought in. And I will leave this last word and wrap up to Oves, who has also worked closely with the CPS. CPS. And Oves. Thank you, Arjun. Um, Malana Sahab had believed that we are living in a world of multi-religious, multicultural, multi-ethnic societies. And in such a society, positive inter-religious dialogue is of the essence. It is of importance. And the aim of dialogue, which he promoted, was to seek peaceful solutions for controversial matters in spite of the differences. Malana Sahab had promoted respect and honor by awarding it to everyone. And these differences became blessings. And only then the results will, will incorporate into dialogue and sharing of views, which will lead in, into intellectual development, which will be a boon for everybody in the society. I would like to share a small little um, uh, story. Uh, I, I, would, I never had the opportunity of ever getting to meet Molana Saab, but I have been very closely associated with his team members in Kolkata. So I would like to share a small little story that when the tree of synagogue shootings happened, when, they, when it happened in, in US, many of the CPS members 
after hearing about this they approached us and we had planned together to organize a solidarity vigil in kolkata at the synagogue which arjun had also attended and there were so many muslims who came out in large numbers and i was overwhelmed to see that the kind of work molana saab had had done and and the the literature that he has has spread and and it it was completely you know overwhelming to see the kind of peace building initiatives that his team has been doing industriously in kolkata and, and in different parts of the world and you know whenever i i i have been feeling down or uh, i have lost my faith in in a few things his literature molana saab literature and his words have been a guidance for me and i have always looked up to him and respected him and we hope that there are several people out there who are going to continue his legacy who are going to emulate his 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 work and and cps will inshallah taala reach higher standards and do extremely good work and we all are there to support them and i'm sure that you know they will do extremely well in the coming years and i would like to just uh, close off with one quote from his one of his books if you are well mannered towards those views towards those whose views are similar to yours you may be said to exhibit a fairly good character but if you behave properly with those holding divergent views from you or who criticize you then you deserve to be credited with having an excellent character so these are the kind of words this molana saab has, has has blessed us with and as maria sister has said earlier that he was a tree and and, and we have his knowledge with us we have his treasure trove with us and and professor kharida ma'am has also said that you know that he was in the habit of reading and he was a living embodiment of of reading and writing and he followed the quranic teachings ikra bismi rabbika lizi which says read so he lived it and he showed it to us and we need to follow it in letter and spirit and i want to thank everybody who joined us today all our participants panelists and attendees and please continue to pray for molana saab and may allah bless him with jannatul firdaus ameen thank you thank you always and uh, ramadan kareem to all of you and uh, david rosen thank you shyam swami ji thank you david maria ma'am swami ji thank you farida ma'am thank you rajat thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you everyone thank you namaste